So now let's look at the implementation details of this process, right? So I said there will be two forms displayed and then there will be an approval decision. There's also two connectors here, right? So there's a REST connector here to file and system. So this REST connector will uh, um, call an HTTP endpoint, send a post message and pass some parameters, thereby, let's say, red or let's thereby updating the records in, the, in our production vacation system that the employee has taken the respective vacation of time off. And then the employee will be informed via our Slack connector. So this connector will basically send a message to Slack with the, with the respective result. So now I want to really try out the process. So what I could do now, uh, traditionally, I could just start an instance of this process. I could do this via the web modeler. I could click here. Or alternatively, I could also create an API, API call, thereby um, initiating a process instance. What is now new is this test button here. Or to be precise, it's there for a couple of months already, but we really improved the features of our testing mode uh, in yesterday's release. Before I show this in practice, let me quickly go back to the slide deck. So by clicking on the test button, and I will also demo this in a few minutes, you, epid, you, you enter our testing mode, which allows you to rapidly develop and debug your process. So you will, you will see that you can, in this testing mode, rapidly like develop your process by really hands-on trying out the process yourself without needing to open any additional applications like the task list. So it's really allowing you to do some trial and error experimentation of the process. This is not only useful for rapid development of new processes, it is also useful if you want to thoroughly test your process without really affecting production systems. As said, this has been there for some months now. With yesterday's release, we added two key changes. First, you can now directly fill out user task forms as part of this testing mode. And second, you can test your connectors. Doing that, you can, you can really decide, and you, you, will, you will see this in a minute, you can decide to really call the real endpoint of the connector, or you can just simulate it because maybe you don't want to invoke the production system. If you want, you can also provide additional uh, credentials that are maybe stored via secrets. You will also see that in order to maybe call not the production system or the test system or a test environment of the respective outside service. So let's see how this looks like in the, pro in the, in the product. And what now, ha what now happens um, when I click on test, a temporary testing cluster will be, will be spinned up. Um, and this cluster will also be persisted, right? So if I, this will now take a little bit of time when I do it the first time, but it will be cached and then it will be there immediately. I also did this prior to the demo, but I didn't hit the time box. So ser sorry for this small delay. No uh, worries, no worries. <laughs> yeah, just, let's ask me a question here quickly again. Oh, oh well, that's figured out. But problem. there we okay. go already. <laughs> okay. Uh, do you want to shout the question now or? Yeah, just one question here. So mm -hmm. this, this, this new thing that I can test the process like right away, et cetera, that we're going to see now, um, I mean, I know the answer, but I want us all to make sure we are aware. So um, I, I think we can already run a lot of um, BPMN symbols, um, but not necessarily all of them, right? So this is probably like, this is now being also developed further and further just to, to make people aware, right? Exactly, this is also developed further and further. And um, by the way, you was all, you'd always be hinted if you are using any BPMN symbols that are currently not supported. Okay. Um, and this would be shown in the problems panel. And I will also have an example to showcase this later, later in Super. my demonstration. Thank you. Got it. OK, so let's try it out. Um, so we can now test this process. This will redirect me to a separate page, a separate environment. And this is now my testing and debugging environment. So what we see here now that actually a real process instance has been invoked. There's the process instance key. There's also some technical information like the, the start time. And I can also see here where the process currently is. Right, so here I see by these green boxes, I see the process has been started and we're currently in the state of request absence, right? I can also see additional technical information here in the bottom part of the screen, like the current process variables, there are none and much more information. So what I can do now here via this easy to use interface, I can just click fill form and what this will do directly in this testing environment, it will render the respective form, which I already prepared. So let's do it. Let's request some vacation for myself. So let's do it for the next week from Monday to Friday or Thursday. So let's say Friday, full week. And let's put in, it's not a planned sickness, but it's a holiday. Let's place the request. So now what has happened is not only has the process um, um, made one step and we are now in the review request, uh, um, at the review request 
a task, but also the technical uh, data has been populated. For example, we can now see the process variables that have been written with their technical format, right? So actually the end date that I specified is stored as a process variable end date and also the respective value is listed here. I can not only view them, which might be helpful for debugging purposes, but I could also edit them, right? So if I wanted to say, no, I want to test something different now, I could actually change, for example, um, the variable of the reason, and I could set it to something else, like for example, sickness, and this would then take effect in the in the in the um, following steps of the process. But let's not do that now. Let's try to test our process, right? So now we're in the review stage. I can I can also uh, open the form here. So this is now a pre-filled form, just showing me what has been entered before, and I can now make a decision to either approve or reject this request. For this first example, let's approve it and let's see what happens. So this has been uh, proved and also completed. Let's reload. And now we're in the next stage, filing and system. Now it's getting interesting, right? So let's go back. What's, what's about to happen now? File and system, as said, is a REST connector, right? So what this will do, it will post, uh, uh, it will send a REST call, a post mess, uh, it will send a post request to our production vacation system to file the vacation. Obviously, I'm in the testing mode now, right? So I don't want this. I don't want really to uh, reduce my vacation budget because this is just a test. So what I can do instead now, I could either now fire this connector, really invoking the actual endpoint, or I could go to the jobs tab over here, see that this job is now pending, right? This is waiting. This is the job that would be picked up by the REST connector, and I can decide to manually complete it so to bypass the actual connector call. And this is what I want to do in this scenario because I know that the REST connector is working, right? It's a standard connector. There's no need to test it. I also know that my, um, my production vacation system is working. So I can just decide to manually uh, complete this job and maybe I put a result REST call, process variable like this, complete it, and it's done. Let's refresh, and now we're in the la later stage. But I wanted to really test the entire process, right? So there's two branches here. So if I really want to test the entire process, I also want to test this branch. So what you can do now is you don't have to start a new process instance, but you can just rewind. So I click on the rewind symbol here, and I'm now again in the review request at this, at this stage here. So what I can do now is I can again fill the form, in order to have a very like smooth and quick ex, uh, quick experience, fields are pre-filled. So also my decision is pre-filled. This is cached, but I could change it, right? So I can now say, okay, let's change our decision. Let's try to reject it. Let's finish the review. And what now happened is, indicated by this orange or red line here, there's an incident. So what you can also see now here in the lower part of the screen, this incident is locked and there's a condition error, expected at least one condition to evaluate to true or to have a default flow. So let's try to debug this. So what I will do now is I will look at the variables and I will find out, okay, there's a, there's a process variable written, it's called result, and it has the value rejected. Let's look at our process diagram again. Let's see the condition that we have modeled here. The condition is result rejected, aha. So what happened here is that the, the form put a different variable rejected versus the condition expecting to either be approved or rejected. So what I can do is I can just quickly change it here and start a new testing run. This would still, it's still the same environment. So it has still cached all my inputs. So I can have a, I can, I don't need to refill anything now. I can really quickly step through this, right? I don't need to refill. And now I just fix that bug, both branches complete. Now we're in the last stage, right? We want to inform the employee. So let's look what happens here. Again, it's a Slack connector, right? So this will send uh, via the Slack connector, a message will be sent to the employee via Slack. Uh, let's look how it's implemented. It will post the message to the employee saying your absence was either approved or rejected. And what is interesting here, this is a typical setup. The token that is required in order to authenticate with Slack is not stored as uh, an actual value in the BPMN but as it should be as a secret, right? So we don't, we cannot see it here. And this can now be very handy if I test or debug my process, right? So what this testing environment already shows me is that there's a warning, connected secrets are missing, the process reference secrets are not set yet. And I can very quickly do this. I can just add missing, click on add missing secrets, 
Here, the secret name that we just saw in the diagram is referenced. And I can now provide a default secret. I don't have a ready to uh, a token at hand now. So I'll just put some, some other value. I can update it. I can go back to the process by clicking on monitoring. And where's my process? It is the, this one, right? We're still here. And now I can invoke the connector. And what will happen as we expected, of course, there's an incident because the token I just entered isn't valid. It's invalid auth. However, I can do the same thing that I just did before because I know Slack works, right? There's, it's, a, it's a fixed contract. It's also a standard out of the box connector. I could resolve this one and let's just decide to manually complete also this last step, uh, completing and concluding our walkthrough of this process. That's it for our testing feature. Um, Jakob. Yeah, yeah, I have to, I have to ask like right away. That's super, super interesting because, like, again, maybe also for for, for all of us, so the purpose of this whole thing that you just demonstrated is not um, the actual solution that the end users would work with, right? We have task list um, and all the things here. It is a, it's a, yeah, it's a bit like an well, IDE is maybe a bit like you know too much, but it's a bit like a development environment and as you said, debugging environment. So I, as a process developer. Um, can now, like, I don't know, 10 times or more faster, um, put together a process, let it run, um, see what works, what doesn't work, fix what doesn't work, run it again until it actually works. So it's like, it, it just makes me as a developer a lot more productive. Um, that's basically yes. what this is about, right? Yes, absolutely. And I also encourage you to try it out because also during my personal modeling, I really love this tool now because it just makes you so much faster because you just... Yeah, try and error, right? You type in your data, you just test it out. And if it doesn't work, you very quickly identify the root of the problem or of the issue, and then you can fix it and just um, um, start a new one. Yeah, awesome. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.